Doodle bud. Within this box is a pen that I probably looked at before, but it just didn't catch my eye. I never thought about owning one. But now that I got one, it's quite impressive. Let's find out what we're talking about today on Doodle Bud. Here we go. This is a brand I've yet to ever own. I've wanted to, but not this pen. There's two pens I'm super interested from this brand. But I should own some. It's the Waterman. So this is the Expert 3. Boom, there it is. This is the uh, in a medium. Let's check it out real quick. You know, classic. I mean, these guys have been, I think they're like the original OGs when it came to a refillable or the whatever cartridge or something like that with the fountain pens, the first like usable that you could fill ink into and reuse kind of that way. That wasn't dip, I think. Look up the history. You'll find a better job than I could ever do. Nice little box. Boom. Pen. You've seen pen boxes. They're all the same cartridge. This one didn't come with a converter, but I got some kicking around the take it. No problem. Here it is. So, you know, to me, after I used this, I thought of this. This is like a sleeper pen. You know, sometimes there's, you know, sleeper cars that just like, like a regular sedan, but it's got some crazy turbocharged V6 or something that cranks out the power and just murders all these other hot looking cars. So to me, that's kind of what this pen is. Uh, now that I use it, I've been super impressed with it. So for me, this doesn't catch my eye just on a visual side because it's a bit thin, um, you know, a little bit thicker than, well, this is the Jinhao 51A, um, a little bit thicker than that. I, I like even much thicker, like my favorite is a Mont Blanc 149. So I like thicker pens. So one, this never caught my eye for that. And then two, the styling isn't something that normally I look for. Um, I kind of like a little more flash. There's nothing wrong with classic, but just this particular one never really caught my eye. Never even thought about it. Never even tried one. Um, but now that I've used it, I like it quite a bit. So, you know, classic black lacquer. Um, you got the Waterman Paris band, France in the back. Their clip, nice springiness to it. Like everything about this pen is made very well. I don't have good lighting. There's a little Waterman logo, cut an angle. Um, you got the gold colored trim. Little now, one thing that is kind of strange is, whoops, bumped it. So flat top here, but they didn't really put a, a fillet here. You know, they should have a better radius on this because it's actually kind of sharp. I thought it was a burr at first, but it's not. It's just very angular when it's cut. So I find that's a little bit strange because the rest of it's very smooth. But anyways, pop cap, very nice feature. Like how that pops and clicks, it's very good. It's just, you know, the right amount of clickness and it's got the right sound you want to hear. Let's go up close so you can hear that. Click. How nice is that? So nice pop cap. Um, well made. There's a, there's a liner in there as well. Nice little mechanism. Um, there's the nib. So this is a steel. It's two-tone. Again, it's not that large either. I don't know if that's like a number five or something, somewhere around that size. So it's not like some huge nib with some amazing uh, logo on it. But actually, I like the, the W. It looks kind of sharp. Um, here on the back, so there's a little ring here. It's not flush to the pen. Okay, so it's raised. But what that does is this is a really nice posting mechanism. So same click on there as well. It's on there. So if you ever worry about it falling off the back, you do not have to worry about like worry about that with this pen. So if you like a pen that when you post it, you know it's posted, this is fantastic. It does turn though. So maybe that bugs you. I don't know. Some people that I've read that drives them bonkers. I don't think that really bugs me too much. It's a good size, you know, again, I got a large mitt. I could write with it unposted. The length a little posted for me does feel better. Diameter wise, again, kind of like around a uh, Parker 51 type of dimension, a little kind of slender pen, but it's actually sleek. It's classy looking. I, I think any occasion where there's business or whatever, you could use this. Um, but the biggest thing for me was the nib. This writes super well. We'll just crack it open. Again, nice smooth threads. That always I always like that. And a big deal is we got metal, but this these are plastic threads. This is plastic. Good idea, 
right? Cartridge converter, pop it out. We know what that entails. But even just the sound, you know, just good sounds. You can tell a lot just from sound with plastic and how things do. So uh, let's get to a writing sample. And I, you know, I, again, visually, this doesn't catch my eye right away. But now that I'm using it, I like it. And especially how it performs when you put it on the paper. So we got the Waterman Expert 3. Well, let's try to do the W like their logo. So I guess it's like this. Terribly. Oh, let me get you back in focus, folks. There we go. Again, um, this is a medium. This I oh, I don't know if I told you, but anyways, this was a gift from a client of mine. They were so happy with some of the stuff I've been doing for them. I've never had anyone do that. So one, I was super excited. Like holy cow, you didn't have to do that at all. Um, but they did super thoughtful, and I was very very thankful. And, uh, you know, I would have never bought this pen myself, but it was a gift. I'm, you know, I'm super grateful they got me anything, but this pen's wicked. It's really, really good. So this is a medium. I typically wouldn't pick a medium. So one, I think that's great because if I, if I did buy this pen myself, I'd probably end up getting a fine and I got enough fine nibs. So maybe your next pen purchase, get a different nib than you always buy. If you've never bought a broad, get a broad, or if you, you're only a a medium or broad person get a fine or extra fine or something or a stub or something because it's you'd be pleasantly surprised maybe good time for a change right uh writes very very smooth um great flow oh this tripod in the way gives me just terrible writing um a little bit of bounce to it you know nice and this is such a pleasure to write with you know, it flexes, well, I wouldn't say flex, but it opens up a little bit there. Um, but yeah, the wetness is just dialed in. This is really good. It's just like the perfect amount. It's a medium, so it's obviously a nice smooth pen, smoother than I'm used to with fines and extra fines. But, you know, good wetness, but not too wet. You can still use this on kind of cheaper paper. I think it's it doesn't bleed through too much, and you're still going to have a nice writing experience. And that's like... One of the big things, I mean, yes, sometimes just the visual appeal of a pen, like say the Visconti Homo Sapien, you get it really for the looks. And when you have mine, you know, where a lot of other people have had issues sometimes, it doesn't write the best, but you still love the pen just for the looks and you you put up with a subpar nib for that price point. Um, you know, this thing just writes perfectly. It's tuned very well. The wetness is great. The smoothness, it's really, really good. Um, it just writes and writes and writes and writes. It's a great writing pen. It's a good printing pen. And, you know, I am fortunate I got this for free as a gift, so I definitely can't complain. But still, it is a really great pen. You know, I this is my first Waterman, so maybe I'm just, you know, everyone's like, yeah, Waterman's are really awesome. I'm just finding out now that they are. But uh, yeah, price point wise, I think it's reasonable. There are other pens. Uh, again, I'll put it in the description because I, I got to write this stuff down before my videos. But I, I believe it was a little over $100 Canadian type of thing. So I think it's a reasonable price pen. It's very well made. The lacquer is, is nice. Um, just everything about it is really good quality. And they should be. Waterman's been around forever. But... Yeah, the only thing, you know, if you feel that sharp edge, that's a little strange to me. Some people thought it was a burr. I saw some people write about that. That's not a burr. That's just a very precise <laughs> angle. And I don't know why they make it that so angular. That's the only little thing about the pen. I just go, that's kind of weird. Why then just smooth that a touch? Other than that, it writes wonderfully. I really enjoy this. Is, this is like my new uh, note taking pen. Very little pressure, super smooth, fun to write with. Uh, there we go. Waterman Expert 3, medium nib. I keep bumping the tripod. I'm sorry. I got a crappy setup here. But there you go. Give me your thoughts. I don't know. It's, I mean, on Amazon, this thing had like really high stars. I can see why. Of course, there's every now and then an issue. But I think in general, if you want sort of that classy looking pen, 
and something that's going to write well by a good manufacturer that you can trust. That's a pretty big name. The two pens I really wanted to get before coming into this one, uh, the exception, the, the fatter one with the black and, and gray stripes, I think that one looks sharp. And then, of course, some type of a vintage Waterman, a red ripple-ish maybe, ideally with a nice juicy flex nib. Uh, though you know but you pay a premium for those but i'm very happy i own this pen now super happy it was a gift that was a super highlight for me there you go those are my thoughts take it or leave it up to you like comment subscribe we'll catch you next time doodle bud bye bye